we will be launching a small relay satellite in the Kerbal Space Program and as always we will be covering everything including building the aforementioned satellite and launching it from our Kerbal Space Center complex in... on Kerbin, yeah. It is a beautiful day in Kerbal Space Center, who am I kidding? The storm is approaching and the weather looks really grim. However, it doesn't look too grim because we have 343 pieces of science that we need to spend on tech upgrades and other cool stuff that will be propelling our space program onwards. Having said that, let us check which wonderful technologies we're going to choose. And I'm thinking we're going to start with the propulsion systems. This actually gives us some tank, which we really need, as well as some uh, simple command modules. That way we will be introducing finally Kerbals into the space explorations once it's unlocked. That's awesome. Now, we have remaining 163, and I'm thinking I'm going with specialized construction, mainly because it allows me to create fairings, and I will need a lot of fairings because I really want to be placing huge rockets above the sooner the better, including probes. And look, we have explosives. <laughs> hint, hint, it's gonna be fun. Now, however, before we do that, we would do want to allocate some extra research points into the building construction in the space plane hangar as well as in the VAB just to accelerate the building of our current rockets. By putting points in, our rockets will be built faster. I actually am using this systems monitor. I find it really helpful because it tells me how much energy we have, how much, how quickly will everything deplete. It just calculates the consumption. We're going to be placing three batteries. We do will need some reaction wheels. This will be on top of Kerbin. This we are not planning to return, so we can actually make it whatever shape we want. Some reaction wheels and I think two RCS tanks for small maneuverability. However, we don't have that many thrusters and I want to place like three small thrusters which I will actually just or four thrusters that I'm gonna just nudge and rotate so that they're pointing in the right direction. Something like this, you know, cowbell size. Now, with these thrusters placing in the right way, we're going to be placing another communitron so that this has independent communications way. And now I'm looking for another big antenna, which we will be able to use to just use as a relay antenna, right? And a small omni antenna that will be able to transmit from higher orbit. So we're going to be calling this small relay satellite Mark 1. There are no science experiments on this, so the purpose of this one is just purpose-built relay. Right. Okay, now let us put another decoupler and let's put this bad boy into some sort of fairing. Now, if we place this bad boy into the Mothra, it's too large, so it won't fit. All right, time to look for another fairing. Which fairing we could put? So, Mothra aerodynamic fairing adapter. We're gonna be going with a regular one. Okay. Oh, we need it a little bit expanded. There we go. And this is a typical fairing. We're gonna be putting clamshell deploy with a force of 190. I'm hoping that this is Newton's. I have no idea. Another bigger reaction wheels. And then we have a smaller thing going up. Beautiful. All right. So we are actually placing this bad boy upstairs and we're gonna be launching it rather soon. There is another small engine and that will give us a total of 3,200 uh, meters per 2,600 meters per second delta V, which is more than enough to get us quite high into the orbit around Kerbin, which is the whole purpose of this. I'm planning to put an avionics package because this will allow me to control the craft, hopefully. It will not allow stability assist, but it will manage to turn the craft in the right direction. And then we're gonna be putting everything else. Let's put in the small uh, Mothra fuel tank. By small, I mean huge. And then we're gonna be placing, once again, the Merlin engine, which should be able to place this into pretty decent orbit and no need to complicate it further than that. Now let's find a good launch table, place it on top, place it down as much as it needs to be. And this is me struggling with the launch pad, obviously, that's not the best way to progress. However, if we place it here, everything will go smoothly. We are ready for the launch. 
look at this beautiful sun sunrise or actually it's midday so three two one and launch there we go rocket takes off beautifully skywards and it's just a matter of placing this small satellite into its inclined orbit All right, the target orbit will be around 1.8 million meters because at 2.2 or 3, I believe the Omni, the Communitron 16 actually goes out of range, which means it will gonna be, we won't be able to communicate with the satellite. And we do want to put it into 45 degrees inclined orbit so that it does cover the poles as well. We want this craft mainly invisible to or not being overshadowed by the shadow of Kerbin. So that's why it's going into a very high orbit and hopefully it will be able to transmit its data from there. Right. Rocket is running straight and true. Thrust to weight is much better than on our previous launch because previous has barely managed to put anything into orbit. And after a nice screenshot, we are making sure that we're gonna go for the 100 kilometer apoapsis. Once that's done, we are gonna go uh, we're gonna go and place it in a circular orbit, after which we're gonna be raising that orbit. Right, so adding a maneuver node and making sure that we extend our Perhaps is to have it in a nice circular fashion. Great. All right, and we're gonna be using flight computer. So we're gonna point pointing maneuver prograde and we're gonna making sure that we execute this. We're gonna deploy the fairing. Look how beautiful it goes. And then we're gonna be extending antennas and extending the solar panels. Those will hopefully supply us with enough electricity so that this op satellite can operate almost indefinitely. Right, screenshot for posterity because it looks really beautiful and I do like the small subtle, you know, turning of everything. It looks just nice. This game looks amazing. I don't know about you guys, but I'm still enjoying very much this KSP playthrough. Do you? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, as our remote tech computer is burning to place this craft into an orbit, we are making sure that this stage, we're gonna be returning it back. I don't, I'm not saying recovering, but we're gonna be returning it back to Kerbin. You all know what that means, exactly. Now, <clears throat> we are in the 100 by 84 kilometer orbit, which doesn't matter really. And we are gonna make sure that we go to the lowest point of, in the orbit, and we're gonna be making sure that we push it as far as possible to 1.2 million meter, so yeah. Now, adding a maneuver node and extending the apoapsis, I was thinking around 1.2, but actually 1.8 sounds much nicer. Let me just quickly check what's the range. It's 2.50 million meters, so if it's 2.5, 1.8 is actually a pretty safe bet. We want those high as possible, so there we go. 1.8, or not, not 2.5, 2.5 is too much. So 1.8, 1.9, we shouldn't be too greedy. And it's 561 meters per second, so once we actually go node prograde and then just schedule the burn by pressing the execute. There we go. I'm always constantly in fear that my solar panels are not point pointing to the sun. So I'm really careful just to make sure that we do have enough electricity. Look at this beautiful shot and moon in the background. Yes, amazing. Right, having said that, we're just gonna go and press the accelerator, put the, you know, pedal to the metal until we get to the periapsis. Where, what is this? Ah, we have uncovered a new technology, you don't say. Beautiful, that means once we actually finish with this one, we will be able to construct a more advanced craft, hopefully involving Kerbals. Hint, hint for the next episode. Yeah. 
Right, so we are getting closer to the burn. Burn is gonna be happening. And let's see, we are pushing the periapsis as far as we can. There we go. And easy does it. 1.9 million meters. And now at the apoapsis, we're gonna circularize this, obviously. And that is gonna take for another 500 ish meters per second maybe let's see how much 376 or 403 meters per second and i think it's good enough so it doesn't need to be perfect after all it is our first relay satellite so we're gonna just queue it hold maneuver prograde and execute the plan maneuver so once again we want to be fast forwarding to the node when we actually execute the maneuver so uh, let's see if we have the connectivity it appears that we are maintaining a stable connection with the communitron just look how beautiful the satellite looks and look how beautiful kerbin looks with all of these mods and planet shine i don't know about you guys but i find it simply amazing even after all these years ksp still looks amazing yeah oldie but goldie now we're gonna be hitting the gas at these 300 meters per second. And once this is done, we're gonna be deploying the satellite. There we go. And hit the satellite, shall we? There we go, beautiful. Now, this stage, since it has been decoupled, I'm gonna turn the SAS on to keep us in a somewhat interesting direction. RCS thrusters are working and we do have a sufficient amount of RCS fuel which we're not going to be expanding it's just in the future if we ever need to bring this satellite down for recovery that was my main reason why I wanted the fuel on this satellite and let's do another screenshot because we're definitely going to be needing that and after that we're going to be going for recovery of this second stage yes See, I'm recovering second stages. I'm more efficient than SpaceX. Groundworks Space Agency. So let's just quickly say this is satellite, first small satellite relay, and we're gonna be putting the relay icon so that we know that this is a dedicated relay. Good. All right, and now let's take care of the booster. So switching to the booster, or second stage, so to say, there we go, and we're gonna be turning it retrograde and just hitting the engines as hard as we can. Kill rotation and let us just easy does it, hit the gas and deorbit this bad boy. So the goal is to get periapsis very, very low. And I'm thinking like, yeah, like this. And then we're going to be hitting the afterburners because we no longer care what happens to this piece of the rocket. However, I thought, you know what? If it manages to land itself nicely, I might as well be performing some tried and controlled re-entry. Let's see how that will fare. And obviously this is all accelerated as much as possible for your viewing pleasure. Now, there we go, harsh re-entry, easily coming down. We are going supersonic, so we're gonna go subsonic. And I've tried to actually see, can I control the booster? Is there a way for me to engage the engines? But sadly, it didn't wanna listen. And that means it splashed down at hypersonic speeds. And, uh, or no, just supersonic speeds, okay. And then it popped up for all kinds of weirdness. And once it came back, it hit the ground too hard and disassembled. I just thought that was funny. Hitting it supersonic, it's fine, but hitting it subsonic, well, you know, it falls apart. Right, and with this beautiful satellites, I'm gonna be taking a look, making another screenshot, and then if you've made it this far, guys, that means that you probably like the today's episode, in which case I would kindly ask you to boop the like button on this video. It does me a great deal. And if the new episode of this series is available, it might be posted in the link pinned comment below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.